right, we're talking with David Clark, who's running for Congress in Utah for the second district. Um, Mr. Clark, thanks for being with us here at CPAC. Um, Thank you for having me. Thanks for being with us. And I always ask, uh, I, well, I often ask at the beginning, what makes you want to do this? What makes you want to put yourself through this mess of running for office? Well, I had the privilege of serving in the Utah legislature for almost a dozen years as majority leader and also as Speaker of the House. Ah. And I think that frustration of sitting in the chair of Speaker of the House, uh, having to uh, cut budgets, balance, uh, uh, balance a budget, cut spending, uh, really kind of prompted me a little bit to very disheartened about the uh, fiscal lack of fiscal discipline taking place here. And uh, out west, uh, dealing with state sovereignty and uh, state rights, particularly uh, with some self-determination, very frustrated with how the federal government is treating the states in the West. So those are the two principal things that kind of got me engaged. I think Congress has got some areas it needs to fix. Uh, debts, deficits, and distrust should not be the surpluses coming out of Washington. <laughs> That's a good line. That's exactly right. And uh, certainly uh, distrust is one thing that we're seeing a lot. Uh, well, we've just seen this whole business of Obama attacking uh, Catholics, basically, a war on Catholics. Uh, attacking their First Amendment rights. So, you know, as, as a congressman, what's the kind of thing you would like to do about that sort of situation? Well, I, I think, quite frankly, it appears that uh, we've kind of lost our constitutional compass. I think we need to get back to the enumerated powers. We need to, uh, I wish Congress, from my perspective, from sitting in a state and in a chair that had some determination of what took place in that state, it was inherently frustrating to have Congress continue to do somebody else's job and not their own. So we'd like to uh, very much try to get back to those enumerated powers, trying to get back to the constitutional-based program. But specifically, uh, I mean, uh, we, we, the tax system needs to be overhauled, simpler, fairer, flatter. We've got to get entitlements. We've got to be sustainable. Uh, we need to get spending. We have a spending problem. Uh, whether it's a balanced budget amendment or Congress simply taking uh, financial control of what uh, our nation needs to be. We're the wealthiest country this world has ever known. But even with that, we've got a government, even we can't afford it. Right, and we have a Democrat establishment over the last, well, over more than a thousand days that has not even presented a budget, which is one of, especially in the Senate, one of their only real constitutional duties, you know, down hard line in paper, and they haven't done it. Uh, how, do, how, do we, how do we get the people I, I, aware of this? I would, I would hate to try and defend that kind of record. Uh, and I think that's really what this next election is all about. We are fundamentally deciding whether we want to have more freedom or more government. What kind of future are we leaving for our children? I'm worried it's one that's grounded in catastrophic debt. And uh, I hopefully that light on the shining hill, the American promise, uh, we can keep that light going. I think it's been dimmed a little uh, with the Democratic Congress and the, we've seen the policies back here, this administration. Uh, but I'm confident that as a Republican base, we can read like that play. Well, and certainly one of the things that have dimmed that flame, put a dampener on it, maybe thrown some, a bucket of water on it even, is the uh, huge wave of regulations coming out of Congress. Oh, the regulatory burden. We have taken business in here. I, I've, I've been a, a Main Street banker, dealing in small towns, medium-sized towns, uh, understanding what entrepreneurial is, uh, seeing that risk. And it's small businesses, not government, that are creating jobs in this country. And the regulatory burden has been placed on businesses just astronomical. We have asked our economy to put on a 100-pound pack on their back and go out and run the race with nimble economies around the world. We have got to find a way to relief. 81,000 pages of new regulations last year, 88,000 the year before, 79, 78,000 the year before that. Unbelievable. We're on the wrong track. Simple, a simple comparison. When uh, Medicaid and Medicare were passed in 1965, 135 pages. Today, CMS has over 135,000 pages of regulation interpreting what that's doing. So imagine what Obamacare and with the reconciliation and all those pages that ended up being together, close to 3,000 pages. Do you think their appetite isn't to regulate 1,000 pages per page there? Hang on to your hat. We have got to find a way to get regulatory relief and, quite frankly, we're still Obama. And we're seeing Obama constantly going around Congress and even around the Supreme Court in some ways uh, with his uh, powers to regulate. And he's, he's basically uh, uh, creating a fiat government of his own. You know, we've all watched the, the uh, movie Smarter Than a Fifth Grader. We all learned before fifth grade the three branches of government, how to check and balances. Uh, it requires a check and balance. And as long as one branch is continuing to gobble up authority and power and regulatory czars, well, you go on down the list. Uh, Congress has got to come back and regain that balance of power.
Well, and of course, we all know that the House of Representatives is the place where the budget begins. Uh, that's one of the chief duties of the House. Uh, one of the things that Obama has been touting, and, and happily so, is that he's eviscerating the military budget. Uh, Reagan uh, fought that battle himself uh, with his own uh, uh, people, as a matter of fact, saying, you know, we shouldn't be slashing the military budget. Uh, we should be building the military and slashing everywhere else. <laughs> that was Reagan's idea. What is yours? Well, the world is certainly not a safer place today than ever, let's say, even a few years ago. I think the threats around the world, we might not have uh, the evil empire, but we certainly have all the components still there. In fact, it looks as though it's spreading in certain areas. Uh, this is not a time to take and take a, put the military on a back seat. In fact, this is a time we need to make sure that we have adequate resources, absolutely put in the defense of this nation around the world. Are there areas we can be smarter about it? That's across the board. It's not immune to one sector of the federal government. Uh, but I think there are things that we should make sure are safe and sound. Going back to those enumerated powers, that's one of them that Congress and the federal government is empowered to do and need to take that seriously. Well, give us some information on your uh, website so that we can all go check that out. Uh, David Clark for Congress .com, Second Congressional District. Is that a four, a letter four, or the the word the for? Word. It's the word for, yeah. Okay, yeah. David Clark we for go, Congress we go, we know David .com. All right, all right. Well, thanks very much, Mr. Clark, and good luck in Utah. Thank you. And thanks much. for being with us here at CPAC. Thank you.